Hello, this video is on inclined planes. We have a camel in a flat world. Why are we looking at a camel in a flat world? Because everything we have looked at pretty much to this part in the course has been on a flat surface. So today we're going to think about what happens when we analyze things that are not on flat surfaces. Well, let's look at the forces on the camel in a flat world. We have gravity pulling down. Notice I'm beginning to use mg now whenever we're talking about gravity. And because there's a gravity force pushing the camel into the ground, the ground is pushing up with a normal force in the opposite direction. And this is what we've been dealing with. I'm not sure why the video is going ahead. Maybe it's on a timer. I don't know. But what happens if the world isn't flat? What if the camel is on a 40 degree slope? Is this what it looks like? I don't think so, and here's why. Gravity does not care if you're on a slope or on the flat ground, so it's not going to change. It must always point down, so this can't be happening. Well, is this what happens? Well, that's good. It keeps gravity pointing straight down, which we know must happen, but look at the normal force. It is not perpendicular to the surface, so this isn't happening either. None of these two are right, so there must be something else going on. Yes, Mr. Camel, this is the question. How do we deal with objects that are on inclined surfaces? Well, to know how to do that, we're going to look back at our last assignment. At the end of last semester, we had... So there's a whole series of them. This is one that's simple. Uh, that's somewhat like, I think it was the first one, although I think the number's a little bit different. We have uh, force N, which we don't know what that is yet. Uh, and we have force W, and then you were presented with these rules. So let's go through the rules. Okay, the first rule is the mass of an object is always the magnitude of the W force, notice I'm not calling it weight, divided by 10 newtons per kilogram. Well, it probably is really weight, but um, we know that gravity doesn't point at an angle uh, from the horizontal, you know, from the vertical, so uh, something's going on here. But anyway, that's the, what we've always been applying. So here, um, we basically say, look, it's got a 50 newton weight, that's mg over g, so that just means the g's canceled, so 50 divided by 10 is 5 kilograms. The second rule is that this n force along the positive y axis is always equal to the magnitude of the w, the y component of the w force. So in this case, we can know the n-force by uh, thinking about what is the magnitude of the y-component of the gravity force. Well, we notice that the y-component of the gravity force is adjacent to this angle of interest of 45 degrees. And this is basically a right triangle. So using our trig relationship, we see that's going to be a cosine relationship adjacent over hypotenuse. And in this case, that's the y-component of gravity divided by the magnitude of the gravity itself. Well, rearranging, and just using algebra, we see that, uh, so the y component of gravity is going to be gravity force times cosine theta, and that means the, no oops, sorry, the n force is going to equal the same thing. So in this case, since we know the gravity, whoops, since we know w is 50 newtons, 50 newtons times the cosine of the relevant angle is, in this case, 35 newtons. That's the second rule of this game. Okay, the last rule um, we're not going to apply because we don't have to deal with the F force today. Okay, so you want to go back and make sure you've looked at the solutions that I posted online for the that last assignment. It's really important that you understand what's going on there. If you don't understand what's happening, at least to, on the first page, uh, you're going to have a tough time moving on to our world of the inclined plane. So make sure you've looked at the answer, that you know how to get the magnitude of the n-force, that you know that the n-force is always, and the added to the y component of the w-force, is always going to add up to zero. At least in, well, okay, not always zero if you're pushing down or you have a crane lifting up on it. Those kinds of situations may not. But if you have just something sitting, um, I'm getting ahead of myself now, but I'll say if you have just something sitting on a ramp, uh, the normal force is always going to be equal to the 
the sum of the normal force and the y component of gravity are always going to add up to zero. So that's what I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so the real interest then is what is happening along the x component of our frame of reference. And in this case, it is going to be that part of the w force that's in the direction of the x along the x axis. Of course, it's not in the direction of the positive x axis, it's going to be in the negative x direction. And that is going to be determined again using trig. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But you should see, okay, if I use cosine to get the y component, then it's we're going to use the opposite to get the x component. So that's going to be the sign there. And we can also know the acceleration of this object, even though we're not given the mass, because we knew it had a mass of 30, sorry, mass of 3 kilograms, based on our rule for this game. Okay, that's basically was to set us up for dealing with inclined planes. Okay, let's introduce the inclined plane. Basically, in physics, an inclined plane is basically just a ramp. Okay, now the, we're going to start out with frictionless ramps, and then we're going to have ramps that are not frictionless. Well, this one's going to be frictionless. And we have on top of it a 5 kilogram object at the top of the ramp. And the question is, is what will its motion be like going down the ramp? Well, here's the PowerPoint motion. Well, it's gonna, not going to slow down like that, of course. But what will its acceleration be? What will its speed be at the bottom of the ramp? How long will it take to go down the ramp? Those kind of questions are what you need to be able to answer. To answer that question, we are going to take what we learned in this pre-inclined plane assignment and apply it to this situation. By that, I mean we're going to, let's see if I can get it to come in. Not yet. Come in. Okay, there it is. This is what we analyzed in the previous assignment. We had this weird W force at an angle. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to rotate that frame of reference so that the X axis is pointing straight down the ramp. And yes, we can do that. X does not always have to point horizontally. It can point in any direction we want. In this case, we're going to point it so that it's in the direction of what we know is going to be the motion of the object. And of course, that means the y component of our frame of reference is going to be perpendicular to the ramp. That's a little weird for some people to kind of think about it that way. But So let's try that again. Watch carefully. All we're doing is taking that frame of reference and we're rotating it so that the x-axis is aligned with the, or parallel with the plane, or the ramp, and that of course automatically means the y-axis is going to be perpendicular. Okay, so now these forces hopefully will make a little bit more sense. Yes, w was weight, and it's pointing straight down just like we know it has to be. And that n force is the normal force, and that's now pointing perpendicular to the ramp, and we know that's the way it has to be. Okay, so let's now begin to analyze our situation. Okay, where'd the ramp go? Well, we don't need the ramp to analyze our problems. Oftentimes it just gets in the way of drawing our forces and sometimes the, the components of the forces. So we have just replaced it with this dashed line. You don't even need the dashed line, of course, but I like to include a dashed line just to give me some context of what's going on. Why did I point this frame of reference at this funny angle? Well, it's, and so that's why I keep the dashed line. And I've labeled my normal force now, and I've labeled my gravity force here. I have no idea what that guy's doing over there. I've gotten rid of the object itself and replaced it with a point particle. But I've just kept this up here, so uh, in case we need to know what the mass is, it's there and available. And remember, there's no friction, because this is a super slippery ramp. Okay, now we want to determine the acceleration of the block. Well, that's always going to be determined using... Wait, where to go? Newton's second law. And there it is in the upper left. It's no different than what we've always been using. We take the sum of all the forces, whatever they add up to, divided by the inertia of the object, which is basically is its mass is the inertia, and that will determine our acceleration, both the magnitude and the direction of the acceleration. Okay, that's all we're doing. And guess what? You've already done that in the previous assignment. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing is, what is the sum of all these forces going to be? Well, we have 
to add up the x component of the forces and we had to have to add up the y component but what did we learn in the previous assignment is that the normal force when something is just sitting on a ramp or something's rolling down a hill or something like that the normal force will always be equal to the y component of the gravity force and if they're always that way they're always going to add up to zero so we really don't need to think about what's going on in the y component for now because there's no friction but you know when we get to friction that normal force does play a role in friction but for today no friction we can just forget about whatever's going on in the y component so it's all about the x component well there's nobody pulling this thing down the ramp there's nothing pushing on it there's just gravity now gravity is straight down but there is a part of gravity and you know this from life experience nothing new there's a part of gravity that is pulling on this thing not the whole part of gravity but the part of gravity or the component of gravity that's parallel to the ramp and there it is now how do I find out what that is well that is gonna be the same magnitude you can think of it this we could have put this X component vector down here it's, it's this side of this triangle And that's all it is. So basically what we want to do then is we want to think about, okay, this angle here between gravity straight down and the negative y component, that is always going to be our angle of interest on ramps. And so in this case, that means since this is the opposite side of the angle, this is our opposite. So the x component is going to be opposite. And when we think about trig relationships and we use the word opposite and we're thinking hypotenuse and opposite, that's going to be sine. So this is the x component of the gravity force. The gravity force itself times the sine of the of that angle. And look at this. Check this out. Once again, we see that m on top, which is related to the force of gravity, and m on the bottom, which is related to inertia, cancel out. And so we're just left with little g times sine theta. And that's it. So if you want to get the acceleration of something on a ramp, you take little g times sine theta. Well, what is that angle? How would, That's going to be tricky to measure. And, of course, oftentimes you're not going to have even have the ability to measure it. So where do we get that angle from? How do I find that angle? Well, it's pretty easy. And I'm just going to tell you, and we'll talk about the proof at some later point. But it is simply the angle of the ramp. Isn't that nice? So that's how things work when you have an object on an inclined plane, a ramp, and there's no friction. Have fun with the assignment.